Christopher Columbus by Benny Rhodes. Christopher Columbus, Discoverer of America. Christopher Columbus's greatest discovery was not the New World. As a young boy, Columbus trusted Christ as his Savior and discovered the ways of God. This little-known fact was the reason for his adventurous life. Columbus felt God wanted him to explore the world and find new land and people so that Christ could be proclaimed. Finding boats and money to make the trip turned into a grueling experience in discouragement. Kings and queens promised and failed him, but Columbus was determined. He had promised God. Growing up in Italy was exciting. Shipwreck, pirates, and storms marred his early sailing career, but he became an excellent sailor and businessman. Columbus overcame all problems with God's help, even mutiny and being bound with chains. See through his eyes the dangerous voyage to the new world as you read the words from his diary. Feel the excitement at sighting land and discovering gold. Weep with him over the massacre of an early settlement and troubles. Written as if Columbus is talking, walk beside him in his exciting adventures and let him tell you his unique story. About the author, Benny Rhodes was an evangelist and Christian writer. His writing talent combined with his hobby of reading history and his Christian insight produced this unique book on Christopher Columbus's spiritual life. Mr. Rhodes authored numerous short stories, religious articles, and Sunday school curriculum materials for adults and children. For 18 years... Mr. Rhodes served as a pastor in Georgia and Louisiana and for seven years taught Bible courses at Mercer Extension. He traveled extensively with with evangelistic campaigns and Bible conferences. Mr. Rhodes graduated from Mercer University and and New Orleans Theological Seminary. Adventure of Faith and Courage Christopher Columbus by Benny Rhodes, illustrated by A.G. Smith, Jr., Mott Media, Fenton, Michigan. To my faithful companion, Peggy, who has encouraged me along the way to sail a few uncharted seas myself. Copyright 1976 by Mott Media. All rights in this book are reserved. No portion of this book may be reproduced by any process such as mimeograph, photocopying, recording, storage, and a retrieval system are transmitted by any means without written permission of the publisher. Brief quotations embodied in critical articles or reviews are permitted. For information, write Mott Media, 1130 Fenway Circle, Fenton, Michigan, 48430. Library of Congress Cataloging and Publication Data, Rhodes, Benny, 1927 to 1984, Christopher Columbus, Discoverer of America, The Sower, Bibliography, Includes Index. Forward, writing a book about Christopher Columbus, one of the truly great men in history, has been an exciting adventure. I could not have done so without the help of many others who have also been challenged to tell his story. I am indebted particularly to Samuel E. Morrison and his excellent book, Admiral of the Ocean Sea, to Bradford Er 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 Ernley for his illustrated Christopher Columbus, and to Bjorn Landstrom for his work, Columbus. I also relied heavily upon the bibliography of Columbus written by his son, Ferdinand, entitled Life of the Admiral Christopher Columbus and translated by Benjamin Keene, and upon the Journal of Christopher Columbus written by 
Columbus himself on his first voyage, which provided some amazing insights into the Admiral's mind. Since I have written the Admiral's story in the first person, it was necessary that some imaginative fiction be used. I have made an honest effort to imagine the things he would have thought and said in the course of the events which shaped his life. Insofar as the names, major events, and places are concerned, they are all real, and I tried to tell the story just as it happened. In a few instances, I have quoted Columbus's actual words from his journal. Since all of the story is in the first person, these actual quotes, quotes have not been set apart in any special way, except in cases where I was quoting a letter or a document. But they are woven into the narrative. There are some incidents where imagination was used to fill in unknown spots. The story of how Columbus met his wife, Philippa, is an example. Since no one knows how this actually occurred, it was necessary to invent some details at this point. This is true in other places, too. In the case of Columbus's conversations with his cabin boy, Pedro, some imaginative fiction was used. I felt, for instance, that since Columbus was a person who shared his innermost feelings with those closest to him, that he most surely would have discussed his personal faith in Jesus with his little friend. In all of these situations, however, I have tried to imagine how these things could have happened and have kept them as close to actual circumstances as possible. This is also true of actual conversations and dialogue recorded in the story. Obviously, no one can determine the actual words that were spoken, except in a few instances where they were recorded. So most of the quoted conversations are products of my mind. I have tried to be as accurate as possible. If there are cases where, it, where accuracy fails, it is due to errors of the mind and not of the heart. I wish to say a word of thanks to my wife who allowed me to live with Christopher Columbus for some time, to my daughter Lyra for her encouragement and help, and to my daughter-in-law Cheryl for her help in typing the manuscript. I am also deeply indebted to Mrs. Norma Camp for her, in her invaluable criticism and help with revisions of the manuscript. Without these, my task would have been much more dis difficult. It is my hope and prayer that young readers will be inspired by the great man Columbus to become Christ-bearers themselves in their own generation. If this could happen, the story I have told would truly be worth all the effort it took to tell it. Benny Rhodes, Griffin, Georgia, June 1975.